Good afternoon. It's 3 p.m. and I'll call to order the Board of Directors regular meeting study session for Thursday, April 11th, 2024. May I have a roll call, please? Director Meyerhofen? Here. Director Duff? Present. Director Martin? Here. Vice President Griffith? Present. President Sewell? Here. Thank you. We have quorum. Seeing all five directors are here, we'll skip item three. And we'll actually be heading into closed session uh, prior to our regular session today. Counselor, could you state the items we'll be discussing in closed session? Yes. Item number four is conference with legal counsel regarding pending litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1 and D4. One case, Mission Springs Water District versus Desert Water Agency at all case numbers listed in the agenda. And then item number five, conference with legal counsel regarding potential initiation of litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D4. Thank you. And that that last one, um, potentially two cases. Thanks. And we'll head into closed session. Thank you. We'll reconvene into regular session. Item six, counselor, can you report on action taken during closed session? Yes, the board met in closed session. Item number four was conference with legal counsel regarding pending litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1 and D4. And there was, and this involves uh, Mission Springs Water District versus Desert Water Agency. There was reportable action taken in closed session. And there was a decision to seek uh, review by the California Supreme Court of uh, the appellate court's ruling in that case. And the vote was um, yes in favor of seeking review by President Sewell. The, the vote by Vice President Griffith was uh, no. The vote by Director Duff was no. The vote by Director Martin was yes. And the vote by Director Meyerhofen was yes to seek review. So there were three votes in favor of seeking review. Item number five was conference with legal counsel regarding potential initiation of litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D4. And there was no reportable action taken on that. Okay. Thank you. And I do just want to make a quick apology if we have any of the members of the public present um, that were doing our meeting with closed session first this month. Uh, so sorry if that uh, delayed you. But uh, item seven, rules of procedure, counselor. Yes, according to the rules of procedure adopted by the Board of Directors, all noticed meetings are conducted using Rosenberg's Rules of Order as a procedural guideline. Directors should refrain from responding directly to public comments at meetings of the board. The president of the board presides at all meetings and decides all points of order and procedure during meetings. The president is responsible for the maintenance of order and decorum at all board meetings. No person should be allowed to speak who has not first been recognized by the president. No member of the board should speak more than once upon any one subject until every other member of the board wishing to speak on the subject shall have been given an opportunity to speak. No board member shall interfere with the orderly progress of a board meeting and the board president regulates the amount of time to be dedicated to a particular agenda item. Thank you. Item eight, public input. This is the opportunity for members of the public to address the board on matters within the board's jurisdiction. Please limit comments to three minutes or less. State law prohibits the board from discussing or taking action on any item not listed on the agenda. Do we have any members of the public wishing to address, address the board? President Sewell, there's no members of the public on the line. Seeing none in the room, we'll move on. Item nine, we'll skip for today. That'll be on Monday. And action items, item 10. The public hearing will be on Monday, but this item is resolution 2024-06 to collect sewer fees on the tax roll. It is recommended that resolution 2024-06 be adopted, electing to collect sewer user fees on the tax roll under California Health and Safety Code 5470. General Manager, staff report. Uh, thank you, President Sewell. Uh, as you know, this the public hearing will be on Monday. So typically, we also give our staff report on on Monday as well, as it then would be read into the record. However, if there's anything that Arturo would like to present, or if there's any questions from the board, we can 
do those under the study session. Anything from the board? Okay. Or Joe, are you good for Monday too? We, we were looking at this for a while, couldn't we? We were saving thousands of taxes. We could save that money. That it came up about a year ago. We do it every year. Okay. Um, I'm opposed to putting back contracts. Just doing people in jeopardy of losing their house because they, they got so much fire on the So what do you say? And just uh, some housekeeping. Do we have any members of the public wishing to address the board on this item? President Sewell, there is not. All right. Close the public. Um, moving on, item 11. Receive, receive and file the Mission Creek Subbasin Annual Report for water year 2022-23. It is recommended to receive and file the Mission Creek Subbasin Annual Report for water year 2022-23 prepared by the Coachella Valley Water District, Desert Water Agency, and Mission Springs Water District by WSP, USA Environmental and Infrastructure Incorporated. General Manager. Uh, yes, President Sewell, thank you so much. Uh, our consultant, uh, WSP Environmental Infrastructure, specifically Rick Reese, was not available to present today, but he will be on Monday. However, I did want to pick, pull up a quick couple of slides. Uh, as you know, uh, last year in the staff report, it talks about that we were we pumped more water out of the basin than we actually put in the basin. When you look at all the inflows and outflows, the current change in storage was a negative 341 acre feet. Uh, again, Rick will go over this on more detail on Monday, but the reason I'm bringing that up is we do have a change in storage. Um, the other, and I would like if you have any questions that you would like specifically to ask Rick, next week, please let me know and I'll try to get those for him so he'll be more prepared. The next slide, I have received one question uh, regarding how much water has been, as they call it, artificially recharged into the basin over the last 20 years. Can you go to the next slide, please? This was also from the report. It's figure 7.2. What you see here, you'll see a variety of different things. Mountain recharge, artificial recharge, the cyan line. That's when they started using the replenishment ponds. So we do have that information in tabular form. I looked at the report. I could not find a tabular form of how much water each year. So I will get that, and that's one question. I'll make sure the Rick's prepared, uh, ready for that. When they talk about the cumulative storage change, you see that there is a positive the, the, uh, magenta line, and that's why usually we always told that they're, they've over-delivered, if you will, because it shows a positive change in storage. But uh, this graph I, it does provide a lot of information about the runoff from the mountain recharge, the infiltration from applied water, the underflows to both the Desert Hot Springs subbasin, the Garnet Hill, which is actually the Indio subbasin. Indio Hills is not the same as Indio subbasin, and that wasn't clear in some of the text. Uh, groundwater pumping, you see how it increased a lot in the early 2000s, but now it's sort of leveled off. We're using less water. Just This is a pretty powerful chart and what it provides, or provides. So if there's any questions regarding, again, let me know and I'll make sure Rick's ready for it. So with that, again, we'll continue this item on Monday. All right. Thank you. Any questions or comments today? Director Martin? No. Director Meyerhoff? Director Duff? I'll send you an email. Thank you. I have one, and I'm going to repeat this on, on Monday so that everyone is clear. In that, it, seriously, uh, if you read this report, it says that we have a change in storage of negative amount of 341 acre feet. However, we were originally scheduled to receive 7,000 acre feet of recharge and we were shorted. Um, I know that Hillary damaged the pond, but I want to point out that we were short by 1,724, which had that been delivered, we would not be minus 341 in this, in this report. So I think it just... Uh, stresses the importance that we receive regular deliveries, and I will pontificate more on that on Monday. Just so we're clear, this report is just an annual report, uh, but Rick did also complete the bridge document and should be able to provide some more history. But I think what you're making reference to may be more appropriate to Desert Water Agency, and we still have follow-up questions that they didn't answer from before. So we'll keep working on this. That, but, is, but, that is correct. But Monday's a good opportunity to correct, ask but, the expert. But, if but you will. just so you know, in the report, it does say minus 341. Yes. And we were short 1724. Had we got that, Yes, the court would be different. It would not be showing that we did that we made more than we got. Absolutely. Okay. 
directed up just to to pile on and that's if it was seven thousand according to the calculations from what they took in if we were to get eight percent of the 194 thousand acre feet or the 100 thousand acre feet we are actually more like missing three thousand feet from delivery if you count the actual amount they received so thank you sorry well anything further and uh any public comment on this item no president Sewell. Right. thank you item 12 authorization for purchase of equipment for the nancy wright regional water reclamation facility and augmentation of the capital budget it is recommended to authorize the general manager to approve the purchase of equipment for the nancy wright regional water reclamation facility for a not to exceed amount of $331,966.22 and augment the capital budget to accommodate this expenditure. Thank you, President Sewell. I will ask our Director of Operations, Danny Friend, to provide this report. Thank you, General Manager Macy. Good afternoon, President Sewell, members of the board, staff. I have a presentation just to get through some things I couldn't get on the staff report. So before we advance to the slides, uh, one of the things that I think is worth mentioning is we haven't, you're probably wondering why we haven't had something like this in front of the board, um, at least for the majority of the board. And, and for the most part, uh, once vehicles like these or equipment like this gets gets approved in our capital budget, um, we haven't historically brought these to the board. So as part of some of the changes that we were making um, with the board and transparency and, and as far as consistency with our procurement po uh, policy, that's why you see that. You're going to start seeing a lot of those going forward. Um, one of the other big changes is when we made a, cha a transition to our enterprise fleet. Uh, they're not capital purchases. So that's why um, many of you that have been on this board for a long time may have not seen it. So especially the new ones. So with that, um, next slide. So today, uh, I'm sorry, the first one, if I may. Back. So today's recommended action is to authorize the general manager to approve purchase of equipment for the Nancy Wright Regional Water Reclamation Facility uh, for not to exceed amount of three hundred thirty-one nine hundred sixty-six thousand and twenty-two cents, and to accommodate this expenditure to do a budget transfer. Um, the bottom of of the uh, the staff report it talks about fiscal impacts and and what would be done to create the capital expenditure or capital job numbers would be a transfer from the existing regional plan. And the reason that account would like to do that is so they can track those assets differently than the building and everything and the equipment on the site. So, so reasons for equipment purchase. Uh, with the construction of the plant coming to a, a completion here pretty close, uh, when that new plant's operational, of course, our staff needs to have equipment to be able to do uh, the things that they typically do today at the Horton plant, um, receiving deliveries, maintenance at the plant, uh, moving bins that have grit and screenings into trucks to haul away sludge, maintenance and rehabilitation in the ponds. So uh, the purchase of this equipment is essential for the efficient operation of the, of the Nancy Wright, and that's one of the reasons why we are requesting that. With the earlier comment that I made that you probably haven't seen that, it may seem really weird that I'm bringing the purchase or the request for the purchase of four pieces of equipment, but because it's tied to the plant, that's why. So some details. Um, before I get into the details, I want to talk a little bit about the state's purchasing program. And what is neat about is all the price quotes that we've that we're presenting today are received by the state's purchase program, which is that program holds hundreds of competitively solicited cooperative procurement agreements, which allow county, city, special districts, uh, education, other government entities to buy directly from suppliers. Um, the district can choose from a wide array of products, services, and equipment. The state awards these contracts at industry level, and but they leverage them locally so that we can we can use local outlets and vendors. The other part is the district benefits from saving time and money. Uh, some of the savings are as high as thirty percent going through this program. Uh, some people refer to it as a, a government discount, but it's a it's a it's a le leveraged program. They have hundreds of contracts across the nation. So we've done that with almost every piece of equipment that we purchased. So <clears throat> first piece of equipment that's that's on the on the on the presentation today is a case. It's a 570 MXT skip loader. 
Uh, that piece of equipment is going to be used uh, for pond maintenance. Uh, the picture that's actually uh, in, in the slide is a picture of the of an exact unit with an enclosed cab. Uh, it was difficult finding some stock photos, but that actually is one. There's a lot of them out there with open cabs. So given the environment, dusty, windy, heat, so we get them with enclosed cabs. Uh, these are three bids that we received, case, and I'm not going to be able to read the actual totals on the right. Well, I guess I can from the screen up here. We have that. Uh, there we go. So as you see on, this, on the lower right-hand part of the screen, the case 570, uh, it says MXT. It's, it's a, actually, it's a, it's a, there's a, you can add that to their list when you add a, several different uh, components. There's the base model. And then we start adding different model, uh, different pieces of equipment. The 5NTEP turned into an MXT. So sorry for that. But we received three proposals, the Caterpillar being the highest at 142842 John Deere 210 at 140000 and the case coming in at 123000 So that is why staff is recommending to make that purchase of the case. The next piece of equipment is a telehandler. A little, it's essentially an off-road forklift. When you look at it, it it's, the telehandler is a telescopic reach. And some of the issues that we found out, because when this original request was, it was nine pieces of equipment. It was pickup trucks, it was gators, it was a forklift, it was a, a reach haul, it was a high high lift. And because of the door height of the garages, we couldn't get, we can't get a standard forklift there. So we have one down here at the yard that we use, it's fairly new. So in order for us to use something like that, it's limited to 5,000 pounds, we can get it to the door. We could use a pallet jack that like you see people use it in some of our, our, our uh, local stores, but you can't lift it into like containment bins. You can't lift it on top of stacking. So then you have to take another piece, piece of equipment like a reach hall. So essentially what staff has done and, and meeting with management is we've narrowed this down to the pieces of equipment that you see being presented today. But that is why we have a reach hall. Uh, a piece of equipment like this has been used the entire time on the regional plant construction project. And we didn't realize what we would go through, to be honest. We reached out to the, the company that, um, well, we reached out to the state and found out from Caterpillar that they weren't going to be producing them for sale for the next couple of years. So then we reached out to, and give me just a second here as I remember the name, uh, another company called JLG. And that was one of the companies that the contractor re uh, recommended that we go out to. And when we reached out to them, they said, uh, they referred us to companies that only rent them. However, we found that we could purchase units that we could be as old as 2015. So with the, with the fact that manufacturers were not making them for sale, but they were making them for rental yards, they were willing to sell the older models as, as old as 2015. And the, just the way the shape wasn't something that was consistent with the equipment that we buy. So then it took us to what was available, uh, the John Deere GL, GELH uh, TH842. That's a mouthful. Uh, it is a larger piece of equipment. that has a capacity of 8,000. Uh, one of the things that uh, not only did the contractor tell us, but some of the local vendors that if it says it can lift 5,000, uh, don't trust it. If you need to live at 5,000, get something larger. So that's what we looked at. We looked at something uh, at 6,000, but they were even farther. They were, the wait time on them, I believe, was an additional six months. So we stepped up to the 8,000. They said, honestly, you might be able to get 7,000 out of it, which is good because one of the things that we'll be used for is with a lift station that's around the corner off of 20th. Um, at times, we have to set our skid mount pump there, and that comes in right at about 5, 000, a little over 5,000 pounds. And using our current forklift at the Dos Palmas lift station, it's been a little scary. So uh, this will be a, a much-needed piece of equipment to be able to handle that safely and make sure that we, we take care of business. Uh, the last item is is a, a gator. It's, it's, a, it's a utility vehicle. Uh, we currently have two of them. Uh, they're at the Horton plant. There's, there's been some advantages of them. We've been using them uh, instead of pickup trucks to get around the plant. They get into areas that uh, that, that, that normal pickups can't get. Um, not not everywhere is is suitable for, uh, even if it has four-wheel drive, a pickup truck. 
Um, in this case, uh, these two vehicles, we have we had two options. We had the options of buying a diesel or electric. And we felt that electric would be, even though they don't necessarily qualify for electrifying our fleet, they are a step towards that direction to kind of get used to that. And they are, they have, they, the current ones that we have have proven to be more efficient as far as fuel costs. They are more agile. Getting around the plant site itself is not that big of a deal, but when you leave that path, start doing perimeter checks, start doing security checks of the fencing, it is a big site. Uh, just the Horton plant alone is 30 acres, and this project is is, is larger. So um, with that, this isn't due to a shortage of manufacturing. This is to match uh, existing. So this purchase would be a uh, at a state's procurement program price, but it would be recommended that we do a single source or a sole source so that we can stay with the same manufacturer as what our staff is currently being using. And that's all I have to share. Thank you, Danny. Any questions, Director Martin? Yeah, just more briefly, uh, purchase of this new equipment and everything, does that come with the training for the operators and how it's properly to use? Or... So, uh, yes and no. So uh, the skip loader is, is a case skip loader similar to the skip loader that we currently have. And the, the, the actual equipment users would be, be able to step right into it. It's, it's almost an identical piece of equipment. So they are receiving that training here and through JPIA, which is our, our risk management. As far as the forklift and things of that nature, we do have require them to be certified. And the good thing about the district is we've also did the train the trainers. So we have staff here that are actually trained to train staff. So uh, here recently we did uh, four staff members because we ran across a problem where somebody was busy, a delivery got showed you know showed up and hey, Billy, go over there and unload that truck. Like, well, I, I'm not certified. So it's good. It's actually good. I'm glad that they're paying attention to that. And we have several members of our staff that are, have been certified. Uh, the Gators, it's it's essentially like driving a, a vehicle, steering wheel, small, agile. So. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Mayo. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. My last piece of equipment, and I was going to go back later. So that thirty thousand dollars—that's actually fifteen thousand for two, come to thirty. That's correct. Uh, I, I apologize. I probably should have put the uh, attachment to the staff right. report, which right. is um, the next thing is the uh, telehandler. It just seems like overkill for what you got going on. You left up a forty foot cargo container. <laughs> um, well, like I said, we've always trained our staff to make sure. From we remind them, we encourage them, use the right tool for the job. Safety is a big deal, and as I shared earlier in the experience with uh, something much smaller that, that says it has the capacity to lift that, lift that weight, it's not necessarily something we want to do. That allows us also to be able to take it off of the pad and do different things that are like the gravel roadway or the pavement area. So they're, they're, uh, they allow us to actually get into areas that we wouldn't normally be able to with a standard forklift, even a four-wheel drive version. But one of the things I want to remind you is this one forklift would have been a forklift to reach all, pardon me, let me give my notes, a scissor, uh, a, a reach lift and a scissor lift is one of the things that they're looking at doing, plus an actual forklift. And the uh, telehandler is going to be able to, to take care of all of that for us. Uh, how will this replace this scissor lift? Well, you can put the basket attachment that this one would come with, and you can come up and go. So you can attach a, a basket to, to the forklift here? Yes, that they're designed for that. I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. But why would you need to get up that high? 
Uh, hopefully, in, uh, if you haven't been to the, to the plant recently, hopefully on the seventh or prior to that, we'll show you how high the ceilings are. Uh, one of the other things that's going to be beneficial is this weight capacity is reached a uh, uh, distance, allows us to get up on top of the SBR tanks. So something that hasn't been probably to every, everybody's, uh, uh, that everybody knows is during the process that we're doing right now at the plant, they discovered there was an issue with some of the communications and also some of the motoring. And they used that on-site telehandler to go ahead and, and crane it up, reach up to a higher higher spot on that plant. So knowing what they can do and as far as what they can reach, it's, and it's an appropriate piece of equipment. Next one is the uh, Pace Tractor. What's wrong with the two tractors we have now, the loaders? So if you're making reference to the larger John Deere front end loader and you're making reference to the case, it's, uh, there's nothing wrong with them. In fact, uh, one of them uh, is that the case is going to be replaced here with an AQMD grant um, so it can meet the, uh, the carb rating of a tier four motor. But let's just say that that's changed out in a year from now. We have two different plants. We have three different plants. And and to be able to have somebody that has a class A to take that vehicle from one place to the next, to wait for it to, to be available is not always a, a good thing to do, especially with a first year startup in the plant. There's some things that we don't know what we, we're going to be doing with the operation of that plant. As far as the actual beds and the maintenance, that's what they, that's what they do. So to do that uh, several days a week, Possibly, let me rephrase that. To do that several day, a uh, few days a week, and multiple days in a month, to to have that equipment go back and forth, it's just not efficient process. Um, and all of our tractors have air conditioning in right now, right? All of our equipment. Um, uh, I don't know the answer to that. I believe one may not, but the majority yes. And then I see here <clears throat> on the. Uh, Operating different way. Um, the equipment quote, quote from uh, Case says here mechanical suspension cloth seat with armless. What happened to the air ride on the seat? You know, I, I don't take that deep of a dive into that type of equipment list. It's mm -hmm. um, Mr. Jeff Nutters are. are our operations superintendent, and he's also wears the hat of our fleet manager, and he's done that for close to 18 years. And I trust his his value and his judgment in what we get. I know that one of the main reasons why we have enclosed cabs and why we have AC and some of the luxuries of these equipment, instead of getting beat down by the wind and the, and the dust after year and year and the heat, yeah, is because that. of just so, talking about this yeah, inside the cab. I, or, so right there. I can only imagine that that seat's adequate. So I don't know as much as I've also been around equipment, too many pieces of skip loaders at that size that has an air seat. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I've only had 30 years experience, but I'll, I, I'm not sure. Too many of them. Well, I would rather see a, a, a nicer seat form to sit on after four or five hours on that, in that side of that thing. You're, you're working up your back and you, I'll definitely pass that message yeah. on to staff just, that you care. If we can do that within the same price, and if the board chooses to, uh, to pass this action on Monday, we'll see what we can do. I would appreciate it if you looked into that for the, you know, it, you sit in there every day for a while, and you get older, and it starts to wear on you. That's true. That's I think it's, thing, you know, and then we end tired. up working comp stuff, and, you know, it's it just, I, I think the seat, a more comfortable seat. Stay more alert. You don't get wore out. It's, it's just a better all. I trust Jeff's uh, judgment on this, but sometimes we forget about little things here and there. So I, I would appreciate it if you looked into that for the definitely. Will. Thank you. Thank you, Director Duff. Great presentation. I'm glad that we are fully uh, outfitting our new plant so that we won't be on the roads disrupting traffic, moving our equipment from one to the other. And uh, again, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. President Griffith. Thank you. Very detailed. Thank you. You're welcome.
Item 13, adopt resolution 2024-07 and reclassify the government and public affairs manager position. It is recommended to adopt resolution 2024-07, amending the employment classification plan for fiscal year 2023-24 with the reclassification of the public affairs manager position. General Manager. Uh, thank you, President Sewell. Uh, this item was, was I guess, very quickly discussed uh, at our last meeting when we promoted the, at that time, the government and public affairs manager position to the AGM position, which left this position available. Um, I'm going to need um, Marion to help me with a lot of other things, and she's not going to be able to perform all of these duties in addition to that. So we had to find another, someone else to help her in public affairs. Plus, we want to have a more visible um face in the community. We want to be out there more often. So think adding to this staff, we think was in the right, was staying with our strategic plan. With that being said, we have some folks that are mass communication or just recently got their degree. They had expressed desire in the past to possibly work with Marianne on some things. And this was the opportunity to do that. So what we're doing is we're, we're, we're staying with the strategic plan. We're adding a position in outreach. We're basically downgrading the old position from a manager down to a specialist. Uh, if you look at our salary matrix, that takes it from a range 22 to a 15. Each one of those steps is about 5%. So it's roughly 30, 35% less. And depending on what step you're looking at and what the benefit package is for each, you're looking at $35,000 savings by doing this action. And it also allows someone to basically follow what they went to school for, which I think is a good thing. We'd like to try to try to uh, work with folks to make sure that they see their dreams, so they have passion about what they do. This allows us to do that as well. So it's one of those things where the strategic plan and the staff we have on hand, it sort of it, it dovetails well together and it gives additional um, help to Marion as she moves up and helps me with other things. Is there anything you'd like to add, Marion? I know uh, Oriana is also uh, on the available as well if you have any questions. Great. Thank you. Director Duff, any questions? Vice President Griffin? None. Good job. Director Martin? Nothing. Director Meyer? Yes. I'm all for, uh, you know, hiring people who just got out of college, but what are we training people now? I, I you know, we pay. We pay good. We need to get people with experience. I think um, you'll be very happy once this position is approved. I, 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 I don't agree with you. I um, think that, of course, we've got to give the person a chance, but I'm just saying that you can come out of college. Sure, you expect to get a job. But what is really going on here with the government affairs and, and, and that, I, I, I don't know. I was hoping that when... Be honest with you, General Manager Macy, when you were the Assistant General Manager and Mr. Wallum retired, I wanted you to stay the Assistant General Manager because you really do know what you're talking about when it comes to Wallum. I wanted a somebody to come in here temporarily, an intern manager, to look over all of the different areas because we've been under the same thing here for 20 years. Same leadership, the same deal for 20 years. So we never really had a chance to ever look at everything. And this is a time now that we can take a look at this. What are we doing here with public affairs, government affairs, how much money we're spending, where it's being spent at, and whoever you hire is up to you. But that's why that's where I'm at with this. And I'll just say uh I disagree with that. I think uh we just spent uh, six months or so on a very detailed strategic plan. And this, in my opinion, falls directly in line with a lot of what we've already discussed. So, yep, uh, Vice President. This is, this is actually just an internal reorganization. It's not a new hire off the street. It's so it's someone who's been here for a while and then also went and got her degree to move up within. So one of our employees already. One of our employees already. It's not a new hire off the street. Recently. So. So I just wanted to clarify. You're already working here. Yeah, I, I have no idea. There's nothing here. Nobody said anything. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, we, I don't know. I, 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 we can always disagree. That's okay. Thank you. All right. Anything further? 
And do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on item 13? No, President Sewell. Right. Thank you. Item 14, award of contract to AECOM for assessment district number 18, area D3, sanitary sewer design services. It is recommended to authorize the general manager to negotiate and execute a contract with AECOM Technical Services Incorporated for repackaging of the plans and specifications for the AD18 area D3 sewer project, sewer construction project, for a total amount not to exceed $51,834. General Manager. Thank you, President Sewell. I will ask our engineering manager, Eric Weck, to give this presentation. Eric. Thank you, General Manager Macy. Good afternoon, President Sewell and members of the board. Item 14 of this afternoon's agenda pertains to awarding a contract to AECOM for design of uh, assessment district number 18, specifically area D3 for sanitary sewer services. Now this slide here is just to provide you some context and some background of what area D is is uh, the blue area here would be area D1, and that was completed back in 2013. This red area here, as well as here, is area D2, and it was completed in uh, 2016. This yellow area here is area D3, which is this, it's a blow up of that there. So design of area D3 would include uh, the design of, of about uh, 4,600 linear feet of sewer main and the connection of over 100 properties. This design project will complete a fi the final portion of area D as part of assessment district number 18. This contract with AECOM is necessary to take the existing plans that have been previously designed and we'll update them to reflect new sewer standards, as well as recent utility installation from other utilities in the project area. From a timeline perspective, assuming the board approves this contract with AECOM on Monday, they will begin immediately starting work with the anticipated uh, design completion of August of 2024 this year. And with that, we estimate the construction should begin starting by December of this year. Are there any questions? Thank you, Eric. Uh, any questions, Director Martin? Director Mayo? Director Duff? Vice President Griffith? Mm -hmm. And I have nothing further. Thank you, Eric. And do we have uh, any members of the public wishing to speak on item 14? No, sir. Thank you. Item 15, award of on-call general engineering services contract amendment number one for the preparation of a water supply assessment and water supply verification for project Viento development. It is recommended to authorize the general manager to execute a contract amendment with TKE Engineering Incorporated for the preparation of a water supply assessment and water supply verification for the Viento development project in the amount of $21,040. General manager. Thank you, President Sewell. Um, before I hand it off to our manager of engineering, I'd like to um, allow Mike Thornton, the owner of TKE, who, who is here tonight to answer any questions regarding uh, the project, his company or anything like that. I know that to date, he has not been present during, I think at least three of you, this is his first time being here because he has trusted his staff, Steve and Terry, to take on most of those responsibilities, but he was available this evening and. Mike, thank you for attending today's meeting. All right. Good evening. Good evening. I guess we're getting close, isn't it? So um, I just, the purpose of coming tonight is just to introduce myself more than anything else. Um, board has changed quite a bit over the years. Um, I think when I started, Mr. Martin was on the board. Um, I think he's the last surviving member of the board when I started working with the district. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I worked uh, with the district. Um, the district has done some amazing, amazing things. I I have another client that I'm not going to name because when I compare it to the district, it is not attractive for them. But what they have septic to sewer challenges, 80% of their 
service area is on septic systems. They started an effort similar to your effort a little bit after you, maybe eight or 10 years. They have converted zero septic systems compared to what you've done. So it's pretty amazing the accomplishments that the district has made over the years. And staff together with the board, leadership deserves to be recognized for that. Uh, I know there's been concerns about CKE services, and I wanted to bring, come today to say I am ready to address those concerns. As you bring those to our attention, we will make sure that you get the answers that you need. And we are here, as we have historically, to meet the district's needs as they come up. The, uh, the item that's on the agenda tonight, two firms were asked. We were the only one that responded. The purpose of responding is because we're here to meet the district's needs. Um, I know there one last item I'm going to state here because um, former president always told me to keep it short. <laughs> um, Mr. Martin would say I always spoke too long, um, but I will just add one last thing. Um, I know that the payment from the state related to the plant has been slow. Um, we have an opportunity tomorrow. Um, Assembly member Wallace is here to tour our plant, and I think it's a good time to put a bug in his ear and say, your employees aren't doing their job in Sacramento, and we need help. Um, we've, had, we've reached out to president of the State Water Board in the past. I think Brian actually did this and said, hey, we need to get some things done. Two weeks later, a lot of things were done because he, he had the right conversation at the right time. And tomorrow may be an opportunity to have that right conversation to help get some money freed up. So um, I would just say this to the assembly member, and I do know him. I can speak to him offline. Um, this district cannot afford to, that carrying such a burden. We are a small district. The state needs to do its job and release those funds. And I will be available even afterwards for any questions. Um, I will turn it over to the engineering department to, to explain this particular item. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mike. Harry, go ahead with your presentation. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, President Sewell and members of the board. Item 15 of this afternoon's agenda pertains to awarding a contract amendment with TKE Engineering for the preparation of a water supply assessment for Project Viento. To serve as some background, where significant development projects are contemplated and uh, the preliminary and, and during the preliminary um, entitlement process through the land use agency, which in this case is the city of Desert Hot Springs. A WSA and WSB are required to be prepared pursuant to Senate Bill 610 and Senate Bill 221. Um, a WSA is uh, a water supply assessment and a WSV is a water supply verification. Now the proposed uh, Viento project will develop over 100 acres located on the north side of 20th Avenue, just west of the new Nancy Wright Regional Wastewater Reclamation Facility. It will consist of about 630,000 square feet of floor space. What triggers the preparation of a WSA is the size of the development project. And given that the proposed development project is more than the 250,000 square foot threshold, a WSA is required. So staff reached out to MSA Engineering and TKE Engineering to prepare the WSA for the uh, Viento development project. MSA did not respond back to staff by the deadline that we set and TKE did, uh, DKE did respond to provide a quote for $21,040 to prepare the WSA. Given the scope of the project, um, uh, staff will review the WSA. Secondly, to be clear, there's no district monies that are being spent on the pre preparation of this WSA for the Viento project since the, since the developer provided the district with a deposit to cover the cost of preparation as well as our staff time in reviewing it. Are there any questions? Thank you, Eric. Any questions, Director Duff? 
Thank you. Um, quick question, actually. <clears throat> I'm trying to understand. <laughs> The $250,000 contract limit for this on-call contract service and then adding the $21,000 to it for the two hundred and seventy-one, dollars is that because the contract awarded to TKE in July has been fully utilized? The two hundred and fifty dollars has been completely spent? It will be. They are currently working on uh, the N2 waterline project that was under their uh, on-call contract. And uh, that fell within the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar threshold. Uh, by this twenty one thousand and forty dollars, it will put them over. And so we wanted to get ahead of that and uh, present this to the board. Okay. Likewise, they were also they also um, assisted staff here, mm -hmm. and they have uh, inspectors. And they were those inspectors were uh, inspecting a uh, development project off of Palm for us. Okay. And um, um, that's how uh, that's where uh, some of the uh, on call costs were uh, used. I know this might be a question hard for you to just answer off the top of your head, but could you give me an idea of how many on call contracts the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars was able to fund? We we can do that, Director. Uh, I don't. I want to make sure we. I know what you're asking for. And I understand and fully yeah, I know. it's being covered by, I'm just trying to understand why, if it's being covered by someone else, we have to amend the budget. And then I wanted, I didn't recall that the 250 was already spent. And what we'll so do, I was trying what, to get a better. What we'll prepare between now and Monday is we will show the $250,000, how much we have spent and what projects we, or task orders we've given TKE to complete those that work. And then that will total the 250 and why we're at bringing this item back to you because we're actually adding to that right. on-call service. And then we'll also explain why when he answered it will, because we do know that there are other activities that are going to be completed in this fiscal year. Okay. So before we got there, we wanted to bring to you the amendment to get us to the entire contract amount. So, That's all I needed to know. Yes. Thank you very much. Vice President Griffith. Director Martin. Nothing. Director Mayer. Yes. So as my understanding is that the, the developer it says so right here, but the developer has deposited forty-seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Does the developer have any say as to who? I mean, sure they can express their feelings and concerns to us, but this is really a decision made by MSWD to who? Yes, it is the responsibility of the water agency uh, by the Senate bill to to use one of their and it also is a savings to the developer, especially in this particular project. Most of their consultants are from out of town. They're not familiar with our capabilities. Uh, what What is our threshold? How much can we support? We have that information. Uh, TKE's already done an, uh, a water supply assessment earlier this, this year. So they have a lot of the information already. So it's actually a savings to the developer, especially when they're coming from out of town. Okay. Um, my suggestion here is Sometimes a, a few days can be a game changer for developers and contractors and that. So I believe President Will, we have the uh, authority to vote for this tonight. But I would my recommendation can. So we we voted for something on the study session in the past. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh... Well, if the answer is no, that's okay. We can yeah, I, I don't recommend it because it's a study session. And so normally we vote at the regular meeting on Monday and I'd recommend okay. that you stick with that. that. If it was an exceptional like emergency type situation or something where we made it clear in the agenda that we were going to be voting at the study session, then that would be different. All right. I have no further questions. Just one more thing. Uh, I know that Mike Thornton talked about how we reached out to the state water board. That was actually our director Duff that actually had that conversation with him. And I know that it's only tentative right now, but if we are able to have our treatment plant opened on June 7th, he is scheduled to be here at that time as well. And hopefully at that time, it's probably unlikely that they will be caught up in the redisbursements, but he will actually see what we've paid for and they've reimbursed us for half of that or whatever that number is. So, yes, there is going to be some more opportunities to talk to the president of the board at that time as well. So, again, Mike, thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Eric and Mike, for speaking. Oh, Director Duff, sorry.
You're not going anywhere though, are you? You're going to be here for the meeting? Okay, perfect. Then I'll save the other question I have for the next topic. Thank you. And do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on item 15? No, sir. Thank you. Item 16, Award of Contract to Canyon Springs Enterprises for the Well 22 Rehabilitation and Capital bu Budget Augmentation. It is recommended to authorize the general manager to award a contract for the Well 22 Rehabilitation Project to Canyon Springs Enterprises, the lowest responsible bidder, in the amount of $1,333,916, plus a 10% contingency totaling $1,467,307.60. Augment the capital improvement budget amount to $2,240,000 for job number 11611 and to do all things necessary to complete the project. General Manager. Uh, thank you, President Sewell. This is a construction contract with item 17 being the construction management of an inspection services for that contract. And I will allow uh, engineering manager Eric Weck to uh, provide a staff report and ask, answer any questions. Thank you, General Manager Macy. And good afternoon, President Sewell and members of the board. Uh, item 16 of this afternoon's agenda pertains to awarding a construction contract to Canyon Springs Enterprises for the Well 22 Rehabilitation and Capital Project uh, Capital Budget Augmentation. Due to pump failure and other uh, uh, well concerns, uh, Well 22 was removed from service. The Water Production Department recently completed a downhole rehabilitation of the well, which included brushing and bailing and a chemical treatment of the well casing and filter pack. It also uh, replaced uh, some pumping equipment and this work has already been completed and it's done. The second phase of this project involves the above ground improvements to the well, which include uh, the well casing, um, um, the installation of new electrical systems and uh, installation, uh, removal and installation of above, above ground piping and a new uh, chlorine dosing building. All of the proposed work for this phase will be completed within the existing footprint of the site. At the February 2023 board meeting last year, the board approved resolution 2023-03, recommending approval of exemption of determination under the California Environmental Quality Act. So this project is environmentally cleared to proceed. Upon approval from the board of directors, uh, staff will process the agreement, insurance and bonds, and staff will also initiate a pre-construction meeting with the contractor to begin the material submittal, review and approval process. The construction duration is expected to be 180 consecutive calendar days Staff has reviewed the contractor's qualifications and has determined that they are the lowest responsible bidder. Staff will recommend to the board on Monday that the construction contract for Well 22 re Rehabilitation Project will be approved and direct staff to proceed with executing the contract and start construction immediately. Uh, just to clarify, um, I wanted to say that the budget augmentation should be identified in the amount of $680,000. I don't believe that was made clear in the staff report. Are there any questions? Thank you, Eric. Director Martin? Director Meyerhofen? Um, you know, I don't understand why we can't see some of these bids that are going out and coming back. Um, so I, I don't know if you're asking me, telling me, or... I don't really have a choice here. This is what you guys brought. You've seen the other companies. We haven't seen anything. Director, if I'm not mistaken, we have bid tab summary. Yeah. Did we? And there's three bids in your packet. Is it? And I guess I missed it. Page 222. Yeah. It's a, bit, it was a, it, it's a spreadsheet. Sir. I, I missed it. I, That's okay. Operating with one eye here when I was reading this. So, Okay. As long as we keep, keep, keep getting, you know, the proper information, I'm fine. Thank you. Director Duff, any questions? Uh, I just have a clarification question. 
Um, the project was awarded a $338,000 grant. Is that a reimbursement grant? Did we already receive that money? It is in our account. No, we didn't. No, it it's it's with the state. It's through, I believe, Prop 1, and it's much like what we're doing with the regional Another grant. Once we spend it, then we get it back. This is different than the agreement that we have currently with the regional plant, but it's still the same process for reimbursement. Once we spend the money, show the cost that we've incurred, then we'll get reimbursed. Do we have to go through FBAs and all of those steps as well? No, not on this particular one. It's a different process. Uh, it's a different process up into the reimbursement. The reimbursement is the same, but in this particular case, because it's going through round one, CVWD is actually the contract holder in this, okay. and we're just a portion of that co larger contract. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Vice President. Nothing. And I have nothing further. Thank you very much, Eric. Any members of the public wishing to speak on item 16? No, sir. Thank you. Item 17, award of contract to MWH Constructors Incorporated for construction management and inspection services for well 22 rehabilitation. It is recommended to authorize the general manager to execute a contract agreement with MWH Constructors for an amount not to exceed $189,573 for construction management and inspection services for the Well 22 rehabilitation. General Manager. Thank you, President Sewell. Uh, our engineering manager, Eric Weck, would you like to take this item? Yes, sir. Thank you, General Manager Macy. Good afternoon, President Sewell and members of the board. Item 17 of this uh, afternoon's agenda pertains to awarding a construction management and inspection contract to MWH constructors for the Well 22 rehabilitation project that I just spoke about earlier. Uh, presently, MSWD has MWH constructors on call for construction management and inspection services. And for this project, uh, we'll include construction inspection, photographic documentation, as well as specialized inspections of the mechanical and electrical and instrumentation portions of the improvements. The cost associated with this action would be to award $189,573 to pay for uh, site construction management and inspection services by MWH. MWH is an established consulting and engineering uh, company and is one of our on-call consultants that was selected through a competitive selection process last spring. Um, as a side note, the proposed, I spoke to the, uh, project manager at MWH and the proposed inspector, uh, is a gentleman that I've spoken with, uh, a few times in the past that has, uh, gone from one company to this one. And his uh, specialty is this type of work. He's very competent and knowledgeable. And, uh, personally, I look forward to working with him and learning a couple things from him as well. Uh, with that, are there any questions? Thank you, Eric. Director Duff? Do we know how long this estimated project length is? 180 calendar days. Okay. And uh, then... However, I'm oh. sorry, ma'am. No, go ahead. Um, it will be started and stopped. Presently, I believe the uh, Well 22 is in production. And so what we, what we want to do is we want to get start the project. That'll start the the clock ticking will uh, interface with the contractor. He'll submit his uh, material submittals and things like that. We'll review them, we'll approve them along with the help from MWH. And then once they're approved and ordered, the clock will stop. Then we'll wait for the stuff to come in because we're experienced, we've seen there's been some uh, delays, especially with uh, electrical and mechanical equipment. Once it all comes in, and the contractor is ready to get going on it again, then we'll start the clock again, start it at the day that they left off. So contract time is 180 calendar days, but it will stretch longer because there'll be a dead time between when we approve their um, material submittals and when they come in and when the contractor will begin work. And during those stop times, do we have any kind of agreement in the contract as to how many meetings and how much work will be going on during that stop time? 
I didn't notice anything in there. I just want to ensure that we're not having, you know, half a dozen meetings a week during the stop time and then having to come back for an, a change to the bid. Yes, this will not be another well 42. I think Perfect. that's the question that you're actually asking. Thank you. Yes, and we've tried to learn from that. And that's why Eric was so specific. I'm very how grateful. We've, how we've timed out the deliveries of the materials before they get started again. Great work, great work. And then the last question I have about the inspection and management services. Does this project require any kind of storm water pollution prevention plan? I didn't see any mention of that as being part of what's being looked at. I just want to make sure that if we're disturbing ground and, and we're going to have digging and construction going on, that we are setting that example as a water industry and making sure that we're meeting all of those necessary guidelines. Yes, ma'am. Uh, item number two, uh, bid item number two of the contractor, it says uh, they're, they are, uh, they put in a bid for SWPPP, which is a stormwater ah, pollution prevention plan, as well as best management practices and NPDES requirements. They're being paid to do that work. I missed it. Thank you so much. That's, I'm glad. I'm very glad. I like missing it and knowing you knew what you were doing. That's what's supposed to happen every time. So great job. Thank you so much. Vice President. <laughs> Director Martin, any questions? No. no. All right. Thank you very much, Eric. Any members of the public wishing to speak on item 17? No, sir. Thank you. Item 18, award contract amendment number three to West Yost for Horton phase one nitrogen control strategy implementation. It is recommended that West Yost be awarded contract amendment number three to implement phase one of the work described in the Horton wastewater treatment plant nitrogen control strategy technical report approved by the Colorado River Regional Water Quality Control Board in September 2023. This will increase the contract amount to $84,700 from $181,306 to a new total of $266,006. General Manager. Thank you, President Sewell. Uh, as in the title, this is the contract amendment number three. The first contract was actually to help with our discharge requirements for the right facility. Uh, we had worked with West Coast on the salt nutrient management plan and other items uh, here in the Valley, and they had helped us put together the first, basically negotiate with the regional board. The second amendment was, once we were going through that process, we realized that then they were gonna start looking at the requirements for the Horton plant. The Horton plant, we were in the process of negotiating that. That was amendment number one, which was actually to do a nitrogen study for that plant as well. So we were doing we were doing a study for the right, then we were doing one for here, the Horton facility. Then we ran out of time because we were going back to the state. So that was the second amendment. So this third amendment, the reason it is, it's actually a new study, and we're actually now doing the nitrogen study. The first was trying to come up and negotiate our well water discharge permits. And actually that was new permits are the ones that then helped us establish the industrial discharge requirements that we just passed last month. So what this is, is they provided a, uh, a nitrogen control uh, technical report. Uh, and that was based on our, again, our wastewater discharge requirements. And it was approved by the Regional Water Regional Quality Control Board in September, 2023. Uh, in accordance with that permit, a technical report uh, which had two key elements, a work plan to achieve efficient limitation of the total nitrogen at 10 milligrams per liter, or lower the treated wastewater discharge of the treatment plant to the percolation ponds. Uh, as we've always talked about, the regional board ratchets is down the requirements, not necessarily increases them, trying to limit the degradation to the basin. This is part of that strategy. Uh, as we've talked about in the past, this nitrogen control strategy is really part going to be part of the salt nutrient management plan. All of these plans are supposed to dovetail together and continue through almost, uh, 2027. And that's why the completion dates are all the same. At that point, the salt nutrient management plan will then dictate some of the discharge permits across the entire basin. Uh, you've heard us talk about um, CVWD and their WARF-10, there was a support letter that they've asked for through DVBA. It's all, we're all continuing to negotiate with the regional board what's best in, as far as the water quality management. This is our portion of that study as it relates to the Horton facility. That completes my, concludes my report. Thank you. Director Martin, any questions? Director Meyerhoff? So, yes, MWH is the only one who bid on this? Uh, I believe this is the next item. 
Is this the West Coast contract? 18. West Coast. All right, thank you. Director Duff. Just a brief question and then a, a, a comment and then a statement. Uh, question is, what is our current nitrogen at Horton? Right now it is a rolling average of 10 milligrams per liter. Okay, so right at. They, were, they when, when, we, um, when we received the permit in 2022, that's when they established the 10 milligrams per limit. And then the, uh, the other part of that was now start doing a study to see what your plant can actually achieve. Because when they were setting that in 2022, we were concerned that we could meet that rolling average. We could meet it as a rolling average, but they were actually going to put that as a limit and we couldn't meet the limit. Okay. So they were basically when we were going through the process, the board heard our concerns and said, okay, we'll turn that into a rolling limit. That way you can at least meet your permit, but then what can your system actually do or what necessary things would have to change or be upgraded so you could meet that on a consistent basis. So this study is part of that continuing evolution of what our permits will be in the next cycle. Okay. And then on attachment A, their billing rate schedule, all of their billing rates say that it's the 2022 billing rate schedule and that it is from August 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. It's 2024 and I just wanna make sure these rates are going to be our 2024 billable rates for this contract. Uh, I will look into that. I know that the, we we included, as we've tried to do on contracts you haven't seen in the past, the earlier information. I'll go back and confirm that uh, it's not as part of the amendment number three as one of those attachments, and I'll, I'll bring that back on Monday. Thank you. And then the last comment was just a, a comment for West Yost staff, if any of them are, are listening. Eric Cataret from West Yost was on my Aqua Sigma implementation call today, and I wanted to thank him on behalf of all of the smaller districts in making suggestions to DWR to facilitate an online system that would prevent the uploading of numerous and ominous reporting for Sigma to a, a centralized website that would be just an enter and push go. And I thought that was a great uh, suggestion. So I wanted to thank West Yost staff, Eric Cataret for that input. That's it. Thank you. Vice President. My laptop doesn't have a go button. And I have nothing further. Uh, thank you, General Manager. Any members of the public wishing to speak on item 18? No, sir. Thank you. Item 19, award of professional services agreement for a GeoViewer software subscription and support services for the Mission Springs Water District to Nobel Systems. It is recommended to authorize the general manager to execute a three-year contract for GeoViewer software subscription and support services for the Mission Springs Water District in the amount of $63,129 to Nobel Systems and authorize the general manager to do all things necessary to complete the project. General manager. Uh, thank you, President Sewell. Uh, before uh, Danny gets started with this particular item, I think there's a clarification on the last item that you'd like to make. Is the 20 that I received because I it was not 10, it's 20? No, that's okay. I'm sorry. Uh, correct. It, it's our rolling average of 20. They wanted us to go to uh, a monthly. So you everything was correct except for that number. And I apologize. I apologize. Now, please continue with the Nobel. And thank you. If I may, since we're in the um, mode of apologizing, I did reach out to staff about the seat. And we do have equipment, a large loader that has an air ride seat. Uh, our smaller ones don't, but uh, uh, you're correct, and and they do come with them. At least I'm not aware of them the skip loader. So, but I still look into that response, and I'll get back to you on Monday. Thank you, Mr. Friend. Mm -hmm. So today, we are asking the board for consideration to approve a three-year contract. Uh, we currently have that contract with with Nobel Systems. They've been providing our geo viewer. Uh, and GIS services uh, actually since 2004. Uh, we digitized our mapping system. Uh, just a, a funny story yesterday in a supervisor's meeting, uh, water production supervisor Chad Finch said he ran across a map in his office when he was cleaning, and it looked like an old set of blue lines. And, and what is that? 
I said, was there used to be our map system prior to 2004. So when Nobel came along, they digitized all of our maps. You've seen us use exhibits in, in board meetings. Uh, some of those were up here today. Uh, that's all part of what Nobel provides. Uh, and this year and part, part of last year, uh, we made a campaign to deploy a full GIS program. We've brought on Timmons Group uh, this week. The project team had a kickoff meeting and just dealing with that group, what they bring to the table was impressive. The years of, of, of all the experience. So uh, that project that has been presented to the board in the past has got a tenure schedule, but just almost two years. And this contract today is to hopefully get us through that period. Even Timmons group recommended that we continue that. If we were to stop, then we would pretty much go back to everything on paper. And that data would uh, be the data gap that we wouldn't be able to get back or men have to put back in. Uh, although General Manager Macy and I aren't really impressed and, and want a three-year contract. All right, but uh, it started off as a five-year contract. And we're hopeful that uh, we can still get this down to a two-year contract and meet the needs of the district. But um, I didn't put together a presentation or anything because I'm not trying to sell you on them. They are a good company. Unfortunately, we just outgrown them. Uh, they could provide us some of the things, but it would be custom off, one-off type deals that doesn't really meet the direction that the district is going. And um, I know I know they're sad to see us um, break that partnership. So, anyhow, I'm able to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Director Martin? Director Meyerhofen? Director Duff? Thank you for your presentation or lack thereof. Um, <laughs> and I did catch the out clause in the contract, so I'm good with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President, nothing further for me. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Any members of the public wishing to speak on item 19? No, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 20, discuss Riverside Local Agency Formation Commission LAFCO election of two positions. It is recommended to consider the nominees for two Riverside Local Agency Formation Commission LAFCO positions for up for election and have the board president cast a vote for a regular special district member from the eastern region of the county and an alternate special district member countywide. And I had a quick question. Is this something we need to vote on just because um, the deadline is Monday by 5 p.m.? So I'm just worried on if it's something we decide Monday, we might be too late. Just get input from the board when you make the decision. Nothing requires a vote. Okay. Could be wrong. So I guess we're really done in the past. It just consensus that works. Board. If that's the way we've done it in the past, Russ, then that would work. If the board would give feedback to the president, then is that your recollection? It is, and I was also going to state that if there, if we come back on Monday at three o'clock, we do have the information, the nominee form to go ahead and submit before the five o'clock deadline. So even if we, that's why I wasn't concerned about timing. We could, we would have time on Friday, or excuse me, on Monday, to make sure to get the nomination fee, uh, form in. So I would, so I was thinking that we would make the decision on Monday, and just discuss it today, but. We can do that too. We can move it up to the number one, and then we'll have uh, we'll have one of our staff send it in. But you are correct, both of you, that in the past it's been discussed on the diocese. Somebody have a strong opinion one way or the other. The candidate statements are in the in the staff report, and then it is up to the president to make the decision of who who the district votes for. Okay. Um, do we have a staff report to go over today for the item? Uh. The staff report is really what you read for all intents and purposes. The candidate statements are in there for both positions. Um, everything you see in that is from the LAFCO group. Uh, they sent all the information to uh, Dory, and then we then formulated a staff report out of that, and as well as provided all the candidate statements and any comment letters of support for each state, uh, each candidate that we received. Okay. Um, would the board like to discuss any today or? Just I'd go like on in Monday. General, in general, that's you, right? Sure. Uh, would you like to start, Director Martin? Yeah, okay. Uh, in general, I 
I'm not too familiar with it. In fact, I'm not familiar with any of the candidates except perhaps one that, you know, which is named from um, Coachella Valley Water District. But I'm inclined to support a candidates who have a background in water uh, as opposed to the other special districts, et cetera, simply because certain issues concerning water come before LAFCO frequently. And it would be nice to have members of the board that have an experience in 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 water. So that would be the only comment I'd make. Anything for you, Director Meyerhoff? Mike, Mike so, Director Duff? I would agree with Director Martin, although I'm concerned that the name for the one may be a little skewed to not necessarily have an open mind for issues that we may have in the future, which concerns me. Um, and so, so I guess I would have to counter that argument in that, is it better to have someone who knows nothing who might be more open-minded to listen than to have someone who has an agenda? But I don't know. Who knows nothing about the water world is what I, yeah, let me clarify. I, I don't mean to any disrespect there whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to understand strategically for our district's benefit. Is it in, in the one special district for the Eastern, is it better to have someone in a local, G, a local GSA in our district that may have an opinion that we may not agree with? if we needed their open mind, just voicing an opinion. Vice President. Uh, I, I went to um, speak of my ignorance. And so I have not really paid attention to anything that has come before LAFCO or any decisions, which uh, maybe probably should pay attention to that. So I can't say one way or another who I think might be more qualified because I've not looked at any of their decisions lately. Um, I will leave that to the president. So, and whatever feedback you get from others to make that decision. Okay. Um, as far as the two candidates for the, uh, between Bruce and Costello, um, I'm familiar with both. Bruce I know is pretty involved. He's almost always at the CSDA conferences. Um, I've met Costello, but I haven't seen him maybe as active in Aqua or different things like that. Um, but I guess uh, over the weekend, if you want to read through their statements and um, provide any more input, I'm open to it. As for the other, between those five names, um, I'm only familiar with the one, and that's Harvey Ryan, um, Elsinore Valley. But I've just seen them at Aqua before. I'm not really familiar. But, so look it over over the weekend, and we will discuss a little more on Monday. Do we have any members of the public wishing to address the board on item 20? No, sir. Thank you. Moving on to discussion items. I believe both of these we will discuss on Monday. Yes. Okay. So item 21. Nancy Wright Regional Water Reclamation Facility Update and Item 22, Critical Services Center and Administrative Building Update will be on Monday. Consent Agenda consists of Item 23, Approval of Minutes, and Item 24, Register of Demands. Would anyone like to pull any of those today to discuss? Director Duff? Register of Demands, please. Go ahead. Um, I just have a few questions on, hold on one second. Can you refresh my memory on the project Downing Construction is working on for us? Uh, that is the conveyance line. Okay. The the force main and the sewer that goes down a little Morongo. Perfect. Thank you. And then um, also, sorry, reading through my notes. Um, we we had a main line break, I guess, that required our landscapers to remove a palm tree. Was that, can, can I get some detail on that expense and on that break a little bit? Because I didn't hear anything about the 
break in other reports. So. Absolutely. It's something that happened this month. That's why it may not have been included in the uh, GM report. Uh, Danny's prepared to talk about that. Thank you. Good afternoon. So there were, there's been two incidents, and the one that's in the register this month is one that happened in Desert Crest. And there was, uh, our, our water lines and sewer lines are in an easement. And the where the leak was is directly underneath. Staff met with on-site HOA, met with the property owner who was absentee, the person behind. And no, it's not my tree. No, it's not our tree. So in order for us to safely fix the water line, we had to take down the the, the palm tree that was there. And so they took it down to a safe point where we could then manually take the wood ball uh, excavate it and then repair the leak. And without getting too too far into this, you're gonna probably have another one in the future register man because on 14th Avenue, 14th Street, uh, we had an, a patamas tree that was very dangerous and we had to do the same thing when it came in, so. And this is because the property owners are not taking responsibility for the plants they have on their property or because Ultimately, yes. The, the, the best way to say it is we have an easement for owning, operating, and maintaining our water line. We don't have it in fee title. Easements are terrible. You've heard staff talk about uh, prioritization in our master plan. And for that reason, um, floods that we recently had here on First Street today, uh, some of the houses without fencing and other improvements, we've had houses flooding out. Uh, older lines, undersized lines, trees, you know, dog feces, unfortunately, it is, easements are um, a challenge for the district. Uh, in the past, um, April Scott worked with code enforcement to try to help us, and we did make some headway. Unfortunately, we just didn't get on the way. As far as the trees go, there's a cost associated with it, so it's not right. a tree. Right. I'd like to see us continue to work with the city and and whatever is necessary to try and mitigate some of those expenses and any if it feels futile then come back and let us know but i'd like to see us try again to work with city staff in getting those areas cleaned up and holding those property owners responsible because sure. ultimately every rate payer in our city just had to pay for that it's not my tree property owner who owned owned that property and we've all had to pay for that now so right. sorry for my soapbox just no, it, it, kind of it's like <laughs> A fantastic time because currently staff's working with the director of code enforcement, Christina, yeah. uh, with with the, the cannabis compliance. So we would, we're continuing to, to work closely. So we'll bring that up. We're working with her to take care of the uh, homeless and campus on our properties near the solar. Perfect. So we've had a lot of face time. So it'll be a perfect opportunity to, to talk about that. And at the same time, hopefully we can get the master plan completed and start getting uh, funding for moving some of these areas out of there. So that's the ultimate goal for the district. Absolutely. And then you might be the same person who needs to answer this question. Uh, we paid Walter Motor and Controls for a motor repair. Was that on a pump, on a vehicle? It was a $15,000 motor repair. So it just kind of caught my attention. So Walton Motors is one of our vendors that does motors only. Uh, this is a vertical turbine motor for wall 21. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Thank you so much. That's it. Thanks, Thank you. My office. I don't go anywhere. Um, the This palm tree, was it in front of the house? Was it back in the alley? Uh, the rear easement. What? The easement, the rear? Yeah. Yeah. It was in the, in the rear. So it could have been a volunteer seed that Flew in or something. Nobody actually was landscaping in there back there. Um, it's, it's anything's possible. I, I, likely twenty years, twenty plus years. Yeah, it was large. So the the reason why I ask this is because when I was a uh, parks commissioner, it came up who was responsible for the vegetation in the easement, Palm Drive, from the curb over. You have that little thing there. Um, came up back then that the owner of the store and the property owner was responsible for that space there. But if it's in the back there and the, 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 the volunteer or seed could have came in, but Director Duff said absolutely right. It, you know, who's why should we be responsible covering all that? Agreed. The unfortunate, so, it would be an emergency if, if it was under other circumstances. 
we likely would have pursued it further. Uh, we were going to go ahead and try to take care of it ourselves, but we just didn't have the reach to, to, to get to that high. So. Now, see, I'd still submit the bill. Sorry for interrupting. I'd still submit the bill to the property owner. Um, now I know if it's the root system, the trees in there be on the other side of their fence, and the root system runs into our lines, they're responsible for it. We could probably talk about this for the next couple of hours. The attorney right yeah. there might be able to tell you the same. I don't know. I'd like to hear what he has to say. Are we drifting off the agenda here? Um, um, no, this is the discussion I have. It's the it's the the warrant. It's 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 the register of demands. The specific right. cost, not necessarily whether the easement is our requirement to maintain or things of that nature. It's a study session, hasn't it? And we can ask each other questions, and you know, we're a little bit off the agenda. But it's, you're looking at me, the attorneys over there. Yeah, we're just you're the one talking. We're we're just drifting a little bit. So all right. Do you think the easements uh, could be a item we discuss at an upcoming workshop absolutely absolutely we're going to be bringing that back to you as we continue with the master plan and looking at the seven odd miles of rear easement water main that we have and trying to um, come up with a plan to try to mitigate those as quickly as we can All right thank you moving on to item 25 director's reports does anyone want to give the report today monday item 26 general manager's report we will be giving that on Monday as well. All right. Item 27, district council comments. Yes, mine's brief, so I'll do it today. Um, we continue to represent the, the uh, district on the uh, Mission Springs Water District versus DWA matter. We reported at a closed session today that we're going to seek review by the Supreme Court. Um, we also, um, as needed, assist the district on employment law matters, continue uh, working with the district um on acquisition of an easement from SCE, which will be coming to you on Monday for a public hearing. And then working with staff on updating some policies. Uh, in addition to that, working with uh, district staff, mainly the general manager on a duplication of service issue. And then uh, as needed, providing advice on public contracting matters. And that's my report. Thank you. Item 28, Director, comments and requests for future agenda items. Director Martin? Yes, I have one, one comment, and, and I would really like to uh, compliment uh, Dory Petit for putting together this voluminous agenda item. I was watching her. I came into her office uh, and, and was watching her go through and for her to have to make copies of every page and put this in the binder and get it organized really is a lot of work. And uh, congratulations on doing a terrific job. I hope you don't you don't have to go through this on a regular basis for you, but um, anyway, good work. Director Meyerhofen. Yes, General Manager Macy, I've asked in the past about some safety issues on the other side. There was some PVC pipe and what goes on over there. And what is the district, uh, I would like to hear Monday, what the district plans on doing about the issues that you and I have discussed before about six months. Six months. So you can have my answer today. We have we have looked at a lot of the cost and we decided that we didn't want to put a lot of infrastructure or extra money into this facility, knowing that hopefully in the next 18 months we'll be moving down to the corporate yard. Good. So if somebody trips over that and gets hurt, we'll just tell them what? I'm so, I want to leave these safety issues for another 18 I months. I don't know that there is a safety issue. Mr. Mason, we, you and I both went out there and we discussed it about it right after you became the, the general manager. We went over next door. Walked, we walked did, and out, as I stated, we went over time, there. the sidewalk does not extend to the areas that you were making reference to. You do what's best for the district, and I'm going to do what's best for the customers. I believe I do both. Thank you. Director Duff. I'm going to save my comments for Monday. Thank you. Vice President. Okay. Ditto. And with that, meeting is adjourned.